So hello and welcome, we are Love Rugby League Weekly, my name's Dave Parkinson, this is the Drew Meister General, Mr Drew Derbyship, great to have you back pal. I know, it's, it's been a couple of weeks hasn't it, since I've last been on it, I've been on my jollies and in Barcelona and Las Vegas and wherever and the week before I think I was off work as well. Uh, you've, been, you've been trying to get as many stamps in your passport as you can, you're trying to beat me aren't you? Yeah, well you, you've been serving yourself as well though, Well yeah, you? yeah, so, yeah, that's true, that's so true. You, you've been getting uh, about and you you went to the lovely uh, district of Cumbria didn't you last night? I did, that was a good trip, good trip, got to speak to Paul Crary, we'll be hearing from him next week on the Love Rugby League podcast, um, spoke to John Keir as well, he's never given that many professional debuts in a game before, 10 debutants for wow. Bradford last night. Um, it was a tough night for them wasn't it? It was, it well, was. Uh, so what was the average age, do, do we know? Uh, I think it was 20, either 21 or 20 years, 6 months. Oh, wow. So a really, really young, young team. Um, anyway, welcome. This is Love Rugby League Weekly. Uh, we're, we've got quite a busy show, haven't we? So I'm going to come to you to, to plug everything that's going on because you've been a busy boy this morning, haven't oh, you? Oh, yeah, I've been a bit of a busy boy all week. It's, it's going to that time of year now, Dave, where a lot of contract extensions occur or... Uh, moving between clubs for some players obviously we've seen this morning that Mitch Clark has jumped from Castleford to Wigan uh, Wigan have been very busy this morning uh, they've got uh, Ollie Partington Jack Wells and Morgan Smithy signed up to new deals that's uh, great news so, yeah. so, I mean, like, yeah, like we talked about with Bradford they're the next lot of yeah. uh, young Wigan players that yeah. are coming through aren't they uh, definitely Tony Clubs extended his deal for a further two years uh, I'm, I'm probably expecting Jake and Bibby at some point as well today, but I'll probably say that now and get proved wrong and it only be announced at the end of the season or something. I'll watch something you like pop up somewhere else. Um, but, but yeah, uh, and uh, what's on site? We've got Paper Talk, which has done very, very well on site this week. It's got thousands and thousands of views uh, off the record, the gossip column, of course. Uh, we're going out on Wednesday. We've got uh, plenty more. We've got a piece from James Messenger. Uh, looking at uh, six championship players that could play uh, who, are, who are ready to step up in Super League. In his so, opinion, of in course. In his opinion, it's an opinion piece, of course. Um, but yeah, we've got we've got plenty of content on site, Dave. I think we've got about 30, 40 stories already on site from Monday morning. I hope you've got a scroll um, then. Go yeah, on. yeah, yeah we, we've got a very that. big scroll. We've got, you've got to keep clicking across the pages. We're, we're killing it this week with the amount of stories that we're putting on the website. But uh, yeah, head over to loverubbleague.com for, for all the latest goings on in the Rubble League world. So generally, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to start off with the amateur game, look at Super League, review of what happened in the Coral Challenge Cup, the AB Sundex 1895 Cup, we'll have a bit more of a chat about kind of what's happening there and what's happening with that competition. Big draw, of course, tomorrow, I think it's on Radio Leeds. Um, Betfred Championship and League One returns to action this coming weekend. We want your thoughts, your opinions as well. There's also been a couple of other big news stories that have broken. The likes of, um, well, Hulk Kingston Rovers jettisoning in uh, Tim Sheens is a big one. What a bizarre week it's been uh, in, in regards to that, Dave. Uh, Leeds yeah. getting rid of Kevin Watkins, saying that he doesn't have a spot there. Another bizarre decision, in my opinion. Uh, we'll get on to it. Do you want to speak about it now? Um, uh, we can do, but I was going to give people go the chance to, to, to respond go a little bit. Yeah, go on. So go on. I'll do my amateur round up yeah. because uh, this won't take too long, but we're reaching a pivotal stage of the season really as far as the amateur game is concerned. And last week, there was two games in particular that I picked out in the National Conference Premier Division which were could, could really have a bearing on things later on in the season. The first one is Tato Heath Crusaders 22, Wathbrow Hornets 10. I thought this was a, a, it sounds like this was a brilliant game. First points were only scored after 36 minutes. Matty Norton going over, Lancashire representative. Uh, he was followed early in the second half by Adam Prendergast, another Lancashire representative. And uh, Jack Jones followed him. In between times, Oi McCarthy scored a try for Wathbrow Hornets um, before Adam Saunders scored the fourth try of the afternoon as far as Tato were concerned. You've got uh, young Bobby Goulden doing all the goal kicking there at the moment, kicks three from four, the 22-6 up, and Wathbrow score a consolation try right at the end, a 60 metre spectacular by all accounts by Jay Weatherall. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good result, that. That's all 22, uh, Wathbrow 10. 
Uh, we spoke about Faso, how you feel earlier on in the season, didn't we, when they had that challenge cut run. Mm. Was it Ma- was it Martin Orton who, who scored a couple of tries uh, earlier on in, oh, the, yeah. in the challenge cut for them yeah, as well? Yeah, he's, he's a regular try scorer. can play both centre mm. and second row. Really good player. But to be fair, they've probably got a, a couple of players in in that side who are, who are probably are worthy of, of playing it, it maybe a couple of leagues above. I think there's about seven or eight of them, yeah. to be honest. You know, I mean, we've seen but, what's happened recently with Rochdale Mayfield and Hornets have mm. come calling and have uh, really revamped their squad, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting one because I think the amateur, the amateur game will play a big role, um, especially in the next few years because obviously we're it's not it's not been officially confirmed yet, but we're expecting the reserves league. Uh, to come back the next season, so it's going to be interesting to see how the amateur game uh, links up with the the big boys. It's caused so a few uh, consternations in Widnes, Dad, hasn't it? I've mm. seen quite a lot on Twitter with fans responding to uh, kind of because, the announcement. That because I, I remember going back to well, four, about three or four years ago now, where the club, there was about six or seven clubs who ran reserve sides uh, before, obviously, a couple dropped off and, and packed it in. Uh, I noticed that St. Helens in particular um, got a couple of players specifically from the amateur game just to, to play with some of the under 19s players at the time to, to make up that reserves. Which, to be um, honest, always used to happen in the days of the yeah. away teams as well. There was uh, plenty of A and others that had joined from the amateur game. Yeah. You know, you'd have a couple of games and then you'd get other guys who did sign specifically to add a, their own experiences and help bring the players mm. through. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens and, and see what the type of relationship it is between the amateur game and the Super League and Championship clubs who, who run the reserve teams uh, next year. The second game in the National Conference Premier Division that I wanted to draw people's attention to uh, last week was Egremont 20, Siddle 18. Now, traditionally, Siddle, one of the big boys in that competition, yep. usually do pretty well, usually end up sort of top four or five in that league. And they were beaten with a last second try. Apparently, it was virtually the last kick of the game. Leon Krelling going over for his second try. Other tries being scored by uh, Mark Tyson and Paul Corkill. Uh, a couple of goals being kicked as well by Matty Bucher and Matty Henson. Uh, so great to see uh, a few of the uh, lads that I went on tour with to Fiji doing well and getting on the scoring sheet, which is always great to see from my nerdy point of view. Um, Siddle were well served by Lewis Hosty, who scored a couple of tries. Jack Giorgio got over for a try, which is a great name. What a name. I, th- I think he used to be on the... Did he used to be on the box at Leeds? Uh, yeah, I think he was at Halifax as well for a yeah. short time. Probably did. Right, yeah, I recognise I recognize that name. It's, a, yeah. it's an, an unusual name, so I think he, he has been in the ranks before. And the long-serving Gareth Blackburn kicked three goals now. He's been there for 10 years plus now, it's a great player, plays at full back, plays wing, he's playing standoff at the weekend, so Mr Versatile by all accounts. Um, other outstanding results last week, as far as I was concerned, Thornhill Trojans, bottom of the National Conference Premier Division, scoring two late tries to defeat Lee Miners Rangers, 32 points to 20. In Division 1, uh, Featherstone Lions running out a big Victors, uh, 36-10 against Ulton Raiders. In Division 2, uh, the standout game there was between Wigan St. Jude's and Clockface Miners. Now, not only is it a Wigan and St. Helens Derby, it finished 30 points to 28 in favour of wow. St. Jude's, who were going pretty well, I think the second in the league. Yeah, yeah. Intro's Bridge doing well too, so um, uh, it just shows yeah. that. Maybe, maybe Wigan amateur rugby's on the rise. I wonder whether it'll, uh, it'll eventuate with Wigan being better than a mid-place Super League team. The Prince of Vince is a shine. He didn't, he didn't bite. He didn't bite first time in ages. I've, I've, what, I've learned not to bite because he's tried to get me about three or four times this morning since he's been in the office. Your 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 holidays are having a really good effect because he just missed the chill out. He's like, look at you, there you go. I did chill out, mate. Um, outstanding results in Division 3 include Hunslet Warriors defeating Driglington 21-19 to go top of that league. Um, and I was at a really eventful game at Waterhead. It was Waterhead against uh, Lee East and there was uh, five players simbined and ascending off. But it wasn't a dirty game. They were all like technical offences. And, and strangely enough on the team sheet, because the referee's got to write on what he's simbing players for. He put slapping down against a couple of them. It was, but it was never, a, it was never a dirty game. There was two East players, well, three, 
players from Walter had seen Ben. I didn't see you then as well. It's all you said it went to the two game and there's that amount of cars being shown. I know, I know. But, so, but it was a, it was a crack, cracking game. Great result for the Leeds, by the way. <laughs> um, He's got to get a show to I have, I have. Uh, this week, as far as fixtures are concerned, we've got Egremont against Rochdale Mayfield, Lee Miners Rangers against Wachbrow Hornets. Interesting clash coming up between West Hull, who are top of the National Conference Premier Division. They're at home to Thato this coming weekend. Underbank Rangers at home to Lock Lane and Kells will play against Thornhill Trojans. Division 1, the pick of the games here sees Wigan St. Pat's take on Stanley for me. I think that's going to be a, yeah, a cracking cracker. Yeah. Uh, and also as well, um, again, some interesting tussles between uh, guys that were in the bar with touring squad to Fiji as York can't take on Featherstone Lions. Division 2. Jake Bibby's just been announced. Jay Bibby's been announced as a Wigan player. I told you, Dave, at the start. T- ten minutes ago, I told you. Uh, yeah, Dave, if we waited ten minutes, we could have included... Go back. Back, back, back there. Back to the amateur. Uh, Division two, uh, I think the pick of the ties this particular week. Barrow Island against Wigan St. Jude's. Um, East Leeds against Interrose Bridge. Division three, we've got a big Friday night clash in Warrington. Wollstone Rovers take on Lee East. Um, for me, another great game this coming weekend sees Oldham St Anne's take on Waterhead. So oh, Oldham Derby. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, plenty of action to sink your teeth in from an amateur persuasion. Uh, do remember you can comment, like, share. We want your involvement as well, to be fair. And uh, we're going to move on now and talk uh, Super League. So I suppose in this respect, we can then we can actually reflect on some of the news stories that have been uh, brought out this week. Well, should we go back earlier on in the week and we'll go with the, with the Carl Watkins? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Leaving Leeds. What Do you think goals? this is a half one? I think, I think it is, you know. Because I... I think he's being pushed out mm. of Leeds, which is obviously wrong, of course, because how, how many years has Carl Watkins been at Leeds? How great of a servant has he been to the club? I think he's 11. He made his debut at 17. He's 28 now, isn't he? Is that, did you have a testimonial on it last well, year? Well, usually the testimonial is, well, is, 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 is your yeah. key that you're going to be leaving, isn't it? So, maybe so the right I, yeah, well, I think, I'm on, um, I, I think it's a bit of a strange decision. Mm. I know it, it was, his contract was going to be going up next year. Which obviously Leeds would have been reluctant to do, considering because his form has been uh, down it's been this year. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just been average this year compared to what we, we normally expect of a Callum Watkins because he's fantastic normally. Uh, but he's, he's, he's just coming, he's still recovering from a, a long injury layoff, isn't he? Um, I think more time we needed, but it's, uh, it's I, I just I just think he's been pushed out, and I think it's wrong. That's, that, that's happened and I, I'm quite surprised with the reaction on social media to to his departure from Leeds to be fair Dave, has, it been, has it been mixed or has it been very, very, very mixed been, like, a lot of Leeds fans are, are glad to see him go uh, which I'm quite which I, I was surprised about I know his form has been down but it's it's as though like, a lot of Leeds fans were, were using him as a, a bit of a scapegoat to either play this, this year just because he's captain I don't, but to be fair I don't think he's a captain and I don't think he should have been given the captaincy. He's a fantastic player. Um, but if you look at some of the other captains in Super League, he, do, he doesn't quite match it in terms of just in terms of communication on the field. Mm. I know, I know. Um, when he was first appointed captain, he said that he, he, yeah, he doesn't necessarily talk a lot, but he leads with by his actions. He's talking on the field. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he hasn't been doing his talking on his on the field because he's he's not been the normal Carl Mockins, but. Uh, I just think that pressure might have got to him a little bit um, and got on top. You do generally look at that lead squad though and there's nobody that jumps out well, as a leadership we, 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 candidate. Yeah, isn't no, it? but not, not at all. Uh, I think if he was giving him the captaincy, no, uh, you'd probably have to go with Trent Merriman, wouldn't you? Mm. Just just purely based on experience and, and games played. Um, because if you look who was at Leeds before uh, the 2019 season, Probably the more senior players in that side of Brett Ferris, Liam Sutcliffe, because obviously Jim Jones Buchanan's retiring at the end of the season, mm. so there's no point in giving it him. If Carl Ablett's going to leave at the end of the season, there's no point in giving it him. Um, so, who, who is there at least? I mean, I get the feeling. Jack Walker's an ever present, but he's only 19. 
I, I get the feeling there's a massive sea change that's going to be happening at Leeds, and I think moving Callum Watkins on allows them maybe a little bit of space in the yeah, gap as well, I've, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, of course. It, it, hey, there's no, there's no doubt that he's going to be on a big, big wage. He's going to be on a marquee contract for from next season. So that, that I mean, some would say that's quite cynical of Leeds for deciding to do this yeah. at this particular. Well, point. That, that that of course obviously indicates that he was going to be on a, a huge, huge packet. But I think with the performances of Harry Newman, obviously, obviously he burst on the scene last year, but with a breakthrough season that he's had in the league shirt uh, in 2019, I think that might have uh, hinted to Leeds that, that he's ready to, to play a first team. And, and the well are saying, well, Newman's got potential. He's probably on a quarter of what Watkins will be on in 2020. Um, let's get it done and dusted now. Uh, we, we understand... Uh, an announcement is imminent for, for Callum Watkins um, obviously we're going to do all these announcements today, we're in the middle of Thursday day so it might happen, it, it, it might be confirmed to Wigan later on today who knows, he might be going to the NRL um, but what I did notice on his wife's Instagram story at the end of, of her comments about the, the social media trolls was um, she said something like we both hope uh, Leeds finish top of some Super League next season. Um, so if if he was going to another Super League club, w- would you be saying that? Is that or, or are we just reading? Are we, are we just reading too much into it? Yeah, I think you may be reading yeah. too much yeah, well, into it. it. But it's, a, it's, a, it's a political statement. Yeah. Harry, but, but, but it? obviously we, we know that um, Toronto coach Brian McDermott was a big fan of Carl Watkins. Could he potentially go to Toronto? Is that dependent on if they get Super because League? Because it, well, is it is it is it. Uh, who knows? But he's a Manchester lad, isn't he? Callum mm. Watkins. A lot of people think he's a he's a Yorkshire, but he's he's a Manchester lad. He's he's Callum Watkins, and obviously Tr- Toronto are based in Manchester. But then obviously when they go over to Toronto, he might him and his wife uh, and his and his uh, I think he's got two young children. Uh, they might want to uh, three young children. Lucy's just informed us. Uh, they they might want to to go over to Toronto for a couple of weeks at a time and and experience life over there because uh, it's a great opportunity, isn't it for the. Uh, for anyone going to the Wolfpack, so uh, sticking knows? sticking with Leeds, and they they announced the re-signing of oh, uh, Jack yeah. Walker, didn't they? A five-year contract. I mean, you know, obviously we've seen what's happened with Carl Watkins. Yeah. There's no guarantee he could still be there at the end yeah, of the yeah. years, but he's done well to get that in his back pocket. Well, Considering if you go back sort of eighteen months, they weren't really going to offer him anything, were they? No, they weren't. But uh, they, I think they were quietly confident eighteen months ago they weren't going to offer him anything just because he it was it was still a young kid and they, th- he, uh, they thought they just he just agreed to sign on the cheap. Uh, but that weren't the case. But he's, he, yeah, he's a magnificent player, isn't he? He's fantastic to watch when he's in full flight. Um, I think he's still got a lot of improvement in it, and and I still think he, he needs to put on maybe five or six kilos. Yeah, I just, just to to be at that's. That's super league because he picks he picks up a lot of knocks, doesn't he? He's in and out of the the nineteen man squads a lot of the yeah. time just because of little niggles. Because I just question, you know, because like he still he, on the line. he does tend to pick up an awful lot of knocks during the game, and uh, he tends to go off, doesn't yeah. he, and stuff. And it means then they've got to do a bit of a reassessment and juggle a few players about. So um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm with you maybe he does need to look at uh, bulking up in some respect but you can go too far can't you yeah. I remember Jack Owens when he first burst on the scene at Witness and he was really really quick Yeah. Um, and then they bulked him up a little bit too much and it's took him probably till his mid-twenties till he found his, yeah, found his rhythm again now yeah it is it's, it, it's an interesting it, it, because he, he's small in height as well isn't he? Mm. so if, if, he, if, he, if he puts on too much weight then Will that slow him down completely? Mm. Um, whereas Ashton Golding, obviously the other Leeds fullback, he's a bit taller, isn't he? So he can carry the size well. Uh, so they are going to be careful with him, but I just think maybe he needs to put on that couple of stone in muscle uh, to make him a little bit tougher and a little bit more resilient in games. But there's there's no doubt in his ability, and I I think in time he could go on to become a Leeds legend, coming in like just like Danny Maguire. As you've said. Busy, 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 um, busy, busy. Let's let let's very busy. Let's oh, go. um, Warrington as well. Uh, Luther Burrell has started training as well, hasn't he? Uh, he has. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Rugby yeah. Union, so. 
What do you make of that? I mean, surely that's short term and all that. Yeah. Obviously, um, they're mixing a few things up. And it's a short term signing, that, yeah. isn't it? Sure. Yeah, very, very much so, isn't it? He's coming towards the back end of his career, anyway, isn't he? But uh, he doesn't count on the cap, does he? Because he's a Rubini player. Um, so they're, they're not losing anything. They're not. It's, it's it's hardly even a risk, is it, really? Because we know that Warrington have got money, and we, we know even if he plays five games in 18 months, it's it's not going to affect Warrington too much, is it? Mm. Um, it, it we expect him to play a centre or possibly back row, um, and that's probably why Ryan Atkins has had to, had to move mate way, hasn't he, at the end of the season? Because the link with get Anthony Gellin as well, uh, who's another centre, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Luther Burrell. Um, because we, we, he, he played rugby league, didn't he? He did. Before he went yeah. to rugby union, so he's got a little bit of background, a little bit of knowledge on the game. Um, but obviously, it's always hard converting calls, no matter if it's from rugby union to league or league to union. Uh, but hey, uh, Warrington have got nothing to lose in that respect. Okay, uh, so moving on from Warrington, as you mentioned, busy couple of days at Wigan. Mm. Um, the Jig Bibby signing just yeah. been confirmed. What do you think of that, Dave? I think that's an interesting one. I actually think that we're going to go back in buckets at the moment. Yeah. They're, they're really flying under the radar. Are they, are they just trying to reduce the wage bill so significantly? I th- I th- it, I like, think it's quite a lot of players on a big wedge there or something. I, don't, I, just, I, I tell you what, Dave, I just struggle to see how a team with no head coach for 2020 can make signings or sell players if they don't know who the coach is. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? The side is being decided for whoever's coming in. Yeah, but which I, I think it's a little bit strange to be fair because we've seen it in clubs before where the director of rugby or the owner or the chairman or whoever uh, in the hierarchy have made signings and they said we want we want you to play him and the coach is coming in and they're not really his style well you could also say the same with Leeds but, but, having, handing out the deals that they've done and then Alex Mellor's gone there hasn't he as but well. is, is, uh, is this the biggest hint yet that Adrian Lamb stayed and these are Adrian Lamb signings there's, next a, year. there's a big mix up in this squad though oh, isn't there and yeah it's, it's, there's going to be quite a lot of churn from the look of it but to be fair Dave I know we said, said it um, at the start of the, the show about Jay Baby being announced today um, but I probably won't be surprised if Adrian Lamb's announced as permanent head coach from next year as well today Oh, you reckon? Uh, yeah. yeah. What, what have they been doing? Have they just been hiding all these contracts away and thought, you know what, we'll, we'll have a mad we'll, Thursday. We'll flood, we'll, yeah. We'll have a mad Thursday, we'll just take over social media. Yeah. Uh, they, well, they, Keeps you on your toes, yeah, anyway, yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, it's, it's doing well for the science as well. The science love it at the minute with all the, the viewing figures. Um, Joe Burgess as well, uh, signed a, a one-year extension. You know what, I find, I find that interesting that it's only a year. So I wonder whether he said to his management, well, we're going to see You'll if we can win out, anything or I'll get me out of here at the end of next year. Uh, I think he'll go back to the NRL after next year. You reckon? Yeah. Because I mean, he wasn't an unqualified success no. last time. He didn't do too bad, did he? Well, it was, it was a strange one, wasn't it, with, with Joe Burgess? Because he, he, he only spent the one year in the NRL. Mm. And I, I, I think players go over... Uh, to the NRL a little bit too early in their career and I think Joe Burgess did because I think he was only did they just sign him because his name was Burgess <laughs> obviously the Burgess name has done really well but, there, but, but what was so strange about Joe Burgess is he went to he went to the Roosters didn't he at the start they, they loaned him to and then they loaned him to South Sydney Rabbitals Which the really, rivals you rarely hear of yeah. anybody making a loan move yeah. in the NRL do you so I think he played around about four or five games for the Roosters and then he went and played about eight games for the Rabbit Holes mm. later on which is it's just so strange because you're only spending a year in the NRL and he's already played for two clubs and the two clubs are rival clubs as well um, but he, he did much better in his stint for the Rabbit Holes in his second his, uh, his second club uh, but it, uh, that, by that point he'd already agreed to go back to Wigan the following year by the time he started scoring all the tries for the Rabbit Holes. Do you reckon Canberra Raiders will be sniffing around then? Because oh, we never seem to like signing English yeah. for but, but it's it's working for them this season. They're they're in uh, they're pushing for the t- uh, top eight spot, uh, which which uh, they've they've struggled with in recent seasons. John Bateman have been outstanding, but but probably the shrewdest signing in, in the NRL this season has been Ryan Sutton. Hmm. Because 
It's been tearing it up, hasn't it? They, they had all this hype about Bateman going because obviously Bateman had, was the England, England international and he had grand final winners. He uh, was a Wigan star player last season. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Sutton was an impact player off the bench at Wigan. Um, not a lot of fans rated him. I, I, I'm a big fan of Ryan Sutton. I think he's got a, a great work rate for, for the size he is. Um, but he's gone to the NRL. He's played every single game for Canberra. It just shows that, that they rate something about him. And, yeah, and he's, and he's not playing for England does at it, all. Does this vindicate you as an NRL coach of the future? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe so. <laughs> but, and then obviously, going back to, to Wigan's recent news, Tony Club two-year deal. Jake Bigby's just signed for Wigan on a permanent deal from Salford. Um, youngster, young forwards, Oli Partington, Morgan Smith and Jack Wells have uh, signed new deals with the club. But Partington and Smith is on four-year deals each. Um, Smith has shown, in particular, a lot of promise, oh, hasn't he? Yes, has. yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's going to go to the NRL one day. I, I, I'm telling stop, you. Stop stop kicking our best players off to the NRL. Well, You're packing the bags that, for him already that, at such an early age. That's what happens, Dave, unfortunately. I'd lo- I love for him, for, for them all, all, all our prospects to, to stay in Super League, but that's what happens because the NRL can double the wages. You, you can blame them. Is this where we go, hashtag salary cap sports? That right. that starts to creep into all these, well, uh, I, I, I all know, these that, statements. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to not go into because we could be there for half an hour, Dave. We've got a good hour on that. But Morgan Smith is unbelievable. Well, position. this is why I'm glad we've moved on from the reserve debate because we keep visiting it and you've got the temptation to <laughs> talk about it for half a short. So we, we've done yeah. well. We've dipped our toes in it. We're not going there yeah. yet. Yeah, well, I think I'm a big fan of Partington as well. But yeah. he's, he's got a lot of aggression for. for for a twenty-year-old kid, he's got a lot of confidence and aggression when he when he comes on. And uh, I remember a quote that Sean Wayne said a couple couple of years ago, where it was uh, something like, I, I, my ultimate career aim w- would be uh, to win the grand final with seventeen Wigan kids who have come through the system." It's never going to happen, uh, is it? It's never going to happen, but um, I think... Because let's, let's be honest... With the likes last, of Let's be honest, the, the last team that went totally um, their own, with Nix, well, where are they at? It's not done them any good, has it? Yeah. Still got a good academy, though. <laughs> For how long, though? That's, that, that's <laughs> a big debate in itself, isn't it? With, yeah, um, and, not the and same Anthony Gallagher's been uh, offered around to clubs as well. Well, he was always a luxury yeah. sign, in my opinion, for Witness. Yeah. Probably not the type especially, of player that they needed. Yeah, especially on 100k a year. And he's not played since uh, yeah. since against Lee on Good Friday. Yeah. You know? yeah. Anyway, let's let's yeah. move on cool. because, as you say, it's been. Uh, Lee signing Alex Miller as well from Huddersfield. That's another big big story this week. Yeah, but but again, you go through all of those players and all of the ones, and you wouldn't think Miller with being a Leeds player as such. As underrated as he is, good player, good forward. You wouldn't link Tony Club with signing an extended deal at Wigan because you'd be thinking, mm, he's only average really, isn't it? Mitch Clark has been in and out of the Castleford side, so is he actually going to be adding anything? I think he's only been in and out of the Castleford side, though, because uh, the, the new is coming to, to Wigan. Uh, I th- I, I'm a big fan of Mitch Clark. Uh, I, I, I remember watching him for Feather. Fev- Featherstone Rovers against Lee. Uh, I think it might be the last season of the season before, and I thought, why is this kid in the championship? He's massive, um, and he was just taking Lee back ten metre carries, uh, and, I, and I think he must have only been 23, 24 then. This will be his third Super League club, though. So really, yeah. it's his last chance in yeah. it. Yeah. Make it. Yeah, he, he has been. He has been around a bit, but I, I'm a big fan of him. Uh, Jake maybe one well, slightly weird. Um, is it just? Will it be used as a bit of a sporadic option to, to maybe push the likes of Oliver Gildart so he gets the best out of Oliver Gildart and then uh, if, if there is an injury because he, he can play a winger and centre comfortably, can't he, Bibby? So if there is any injuries across any of the back line, then uh, Bibby can, can fill in there. Let's move on to your second favourite team, St Helens. Theo Farge being announced. Uh, great oh, bit yeah. of retention yes. there. Yeah. Zeb Taylor as well stopping off. Hey, oh, great bit of business from from Saint. I think he said Taylor, he, Justin Albrook said it in the, in the press release. He's playing his best rugby of his career. Oh, he has been brilliant, hasn't he? This year he's thirty six as well, isn't he? Thirty five. Thirty five. He's. I think he'll be thirty six by the time his contract expires next Which year. Which is 
Fur going is it? Cause it, it, it does a lot of minutes as well for mm. for a big back rower and a veteran back rower as well. But he, he's played unbelievably well. Uh, it, and Don Perry as well. The, the, them two are playing well in the back row, and obviously Morgan Knowles as well. Louis Forward, he's been excellent for Saints. Theo Fives was a little bit of talk, wasn't there, about his future? And Do you reckon that was really his agent talking it up? Because surely he's, he's, he's been in the North West since he was 18 possibly. year old, hasn't he? Yeah, possibly. Um, so I could never really he's got, he's got, he's got, see him going out to work. Yeah, he's got a great accent as well, mate. Because, he, he? because he's been in the North West for, since he's 18. He's, he's got like. He's just got an northern accent mi- mixed in with a French accent, so it's just a complete. Uh, it's it just it's so strange when you listen to him uh, speaking interviews. But how good has he been this season? Oh, very good. Uh, especially compared to last season, because I'm, I'm not going to lie, I, I thought he was okay. He was, he was an okay player before this season. I thought, yeah, he'll do the job. I, n- I never thought it. And an NRL club would be after him. and but I possibly pondered his future at Saints to be fair because just because of how good Danny Richardson was last season with, alongside Johnny Lomax I thought yeah he's alright but he's, oh, he's, he's, he's only alright coming off the bench to do a job of those three players that you mentioned in the likes of uh, Lomax Richardson and Fars, he'd always be the third one yeah, you would have always thought him as the third one but yeah. he's, he's kind of edged himself yeah. up there with Lomax this season hasn't yeah. he? and what I like about Fars, he seemed to have have improved on his defence a lot this season mm. because before now you, it was you just, a speed bump, wasn't it? yeah you, you just saw back rowers targeting run over the top of him and, and they got a few tries down that same side but now he's, he's toughened up and what what I've noticed about Fires he goes for the legs now mm. where before he just used to do that and then he used to oh, he, he just used to get <laughs> going through the wall <laughs> he, he just used to get carried back by back rowers uh, but now he's, he's, he's going for the legs which is a smart things to do if you're, if you're a small lad but uh, uh, he's excellent going forward as well he's got great organisational skills have we missed any announcements I don't I don't know to be fair I bet we have there's, there's no data we have because um, I've, let, I've let us know if we it. have uh, you know and we'll, 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 we'll chuck yeah. a couple of mentions in um, right I want to move us on to the Coral Challenge Cup it was the quarter final stage last weekend have we spoke about Sheens no, I'm just going to come back to shit. Oh, go on. I'm hoping to get some comments. <laughs> come on, fellas. Come on, folks. Have we got nothing? Nothing. Nothing. James Messenger's watching. Stephen Hall's watching. What's this? Cat's oh. watching. Join the debate. Come on. We love your debate. Oh. Come on. We can't just talk to ourselves. Well, we can. <laughs> yeah, we don't know them comments flooding by now. Fred Parkinson's watching. Go on, Fred. Um, but I think I think that's about it for the time being in terms of deals. I bet yeah. I bet we've missed one day. We will come back to Sheens, you know, because I think that yeah. deserves a, a, de- a debating point all on its own, you know, obviously. But I want to move us on to the Coral Challenge Cup quarterfinals. Uh, Bradford 16, Halifax 20, Hull 51, Catalans Dragons 8. Hull Kingston Rovers 22, Warrington Wolves 28, and St Helens 48, Wakefield Trinity 10. No real surprises as far as I'm concerned, other than how can you have nearly a 100 point turnaround for Hull? They concede 55 points the week before, then go and score 51. It's absolutely baffling, isn't it? What, what, what? <laughs> it's what so is extreme, that, isn't it? What is happening to them this season? One, they can. They can get absolutely taunts. We've seen it against Huddersfield. We've seen it against <coughs> Warrington earlier on in the season. But then they went to Warrington and beat them. And now they, they, they're turning the, the screw again and, and, and they're winning games again. So it's... <laughs> I've had an absolute nightmare tipping a OFC in the Prediction League this, this season. I think everybody has. Because they're, they're so hot and cold, but, but there's there's no in between whatsoever. They're, they're, not, they're either really hot or really, really, really poor. Who knows? Uh, Who knows? Uh, Lee Ranford it seems actually... even Lee Ranford can't yeah. get to the bottom of uh, it. Lee Ranford actually said, I think it was after the Huddersfield game, or it might have been last week, uh, he said, we'll never, be, we'll never be consistent. He might have been saying that because he was a little bit upset about tasting defeat, but he said, we'll never be consistent. They've also so an exercise, like... haven't they? Haven't Swift going there? Oh, they have, yeah. We nearly he, missed that one. Yeah, because he pulls in it in the, the black and white shirt, didn't he? A pull, uh, which caused quite not, a stir. You're not a fan of this, are you? No. With guys pulling on other teams' no. jerseys during the course no. of the season. I, I, I just think it's not disrespectful. I just think it's like 
it's just not it's not right is it I, do, I just don't think it's right because it, it, Adam Swift's still got a job to do at Saints and he's still got to play well in that Saints ship before he goes to, to Hull do you know what I, I don't know because we're going to have done a few announcements today where um, they're not actually their images are they but they're like photoshop the faces onto mm. a Wigan ship for this season or something like that um, I just I don't know I'd, I don't know it's, it's hard to describe but I just think they, they should just stick to, to them colours for that season until mm. they made the move permanent uh, so yeah so that was Hull 51 Catalans 8 um, Warrington they seem to be easing to victory and yeah. then Hull Kingston Rovers hit back and made a game of it yeah it's OKR okay, as well they're another inconsistent side there must be something going on in the waters in in hope because that's obviously a reason why they got rid of Tim Sheen. Well, yeah, of course it is, and and that seems a little bit dodgy in the way they've got rid of him. But uh, the, I, I I remember watching them uh, play Salford in the Challenge Cup a, a couple of weeks ago now, and uh, they, they was absolutely shocking in the first half. They were uh, about sixteen 0 down at half time. I think it when they turned it around and they won twenty eight twenty or whatever. And uh, and I thought that is just a typical okay performance that because. They're at, they, they're just no consistency. They can't put an eighty minute performance together whatsoever. They, they're either poor in one half or good, good in the other, or vice versa. Is this where Hull maybe they, got the jump on them because at least they can perform for the occasional eighty well, minutes? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't worry for Hull because I think they'll be safe in Super League. Uh, I think it's out to Leeds and London, and I. To be fair, I don't even think that really. No disrespect to London, I think London will go down. Uh, I'm not worried about okay. You know what? I, what? When when people say that, no disrespect, it usually means the sub disrespect. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just it's just my prediction. I, I just think London will will go down. I think Leeds are, have just got too strong of a squad just to keep losing and losing. They'll make it interesting if, well, it, if it goes right down to the wire, though. Yeah, well, they're making a good job of proving me wrong <laughs> at the minute, but. Uh, yeah, uh, Warrington, very, very good, but I still think there's some distance off Saints as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, St. Helens Ellen, eased themselves to 26-6 yeah. up at half-time. Oh, um, I, was, I was there, it was uh, an absolute tonky. I, I basically, I, I said this elsewhere, it looks like they performed in about three clutches. So they did really well in the first 20 minutes, then... Wakefield had a little bit of a comeback at him, a bit of a comeback at the start of the second half, and then Saints took it away from him in the last twenty. Was that would that be fair, or was it even more dominant than that? I think I think yes, Saints just coursed it through it. Uh, but I was impressed with Jack Croft on debut for Wakefield, the young centre, uh, nineteen year old kid, uh, came in, and for his try, he, he absolutely blitzed past uh, Kevin Aguama. Uh, so he had a, he had an impressive debut, but there's not much to talk about for. For Wakefield, apart from that, they, they were poor. They're obviously missing uh, a terrible amount of numbers uh, at the moment. I can I can count five off the top of my head: Dave Fafita, Tom Johnston, Johnston, sorry, uh, Bill Tupu, Tinneru Arona, Joe Rundle. Uh, I'm Mason Casey and Brown weren't playing. They, they, you're scraping the barrel with Arundel like he's in and out like. Uh, a fiddler's elbow, isn't it? Well, to be fair, he'd, he'd be playing, wouldn't he? He would have been playing instead of Jack Croft on debut if it, if it had been fit. Um, Junior So obviously, were cup tied as well, so he, the, he was without uh, a lot of numbers uh, with Wakefield. Uh, but Saints are just and they're so good to watch, Dave, honestly. They, they are a, a absolute pleasure to watch because the way they throw the ball out wide and and the pace of Regan Grace and Tommy Makins and Tommy um, Matt Percival uh, on the flanks uh, are unbelievable. You, they're just delightful there. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't say much more. The best game of the weekend for me was that Bradford and Halifax quarter final. Oh. I just think yeah. just for the intensity and the fact it was close, wasn't it? It was close throughout. It was nip and tuck. We had an eight point try, which you really see. It was, it was brilliant. It, had, it, it was just. A, Without it being a cliche, it was just a classic cup game, wasn't it? It was. Mm. It, was it had a, a bit of everything. It had a bit of fire in the middle. Uh, they had some great individual players. Uh, did Halifax and, and Bradford did okay as well. I was impressed with Foggy Johnson on the wing. 
Oh, he sounds like you're insulting somebody. Yeah, he does. That doesn't fucking it? Johnston, he's yeah. off again. Yeah. But he, uh, I get where you're coming from with him. I mean, like, I think he was on Warrington's books at one point. Oh, was he? Um, so he's had to go away to reinvent yeah. himself as a professional player. He's, um, he's, he's, he's small, isn't he? But he's, oh, he's quick. He's doing well. Yeah. yeah, he's doing well. He's probably going to be in with your Jamaica boys, isn't he? Yeah. A little yeah. bit yeah. Uh, later on. Yeah. Uh, General Bernal, speaking of Jamaica, uh, he was excellent for Halifax, wasn't he? He, not, he came on in that second half. Not bad for 25 minutes' work. He ends up getting mad at match or what? What's Scott Morell going to do? He controlled that game from start oh, to finish, didn't he? Scott Morell was... Oh, that, that game was made for him, wasn't it? Do you agree with Gary Schofield that Leeds should look at Saturday and Scott Morell though? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, oh, he's, he's, he's great to watch. And I can't remember who tweeted it. I think it might have been Aaron Bauer, a media colleague, but... Uh, You'd love to to have a camera just on Scott Morell because his facial expressions in the game and the way he rouses players up, uh, he's a, uh, he's great. He's, you can say he's great. the same. You can say the same about Jake Connor. At yeah, yeah. Can't you? Because yeah. when he winds people up, yeah. something chronic, doesn't it? Yeah, you, you like to to have. Do you know what? When the BBC were doing them um, mic'd up players a, few, a couple of years back, I mean, I mean one of them was Scott Morell because. Uh, uh, I bet it'd be full of beeps. He seems a right character though, doesn't he? Beeps and expletives. Because did you, did, do you remember that part? I think it was in the second half. And was it George Flanagan who... Um, Halifax made an error and, and the ball went near. Flanagan uh, jumped Rell. up, didn't he? And, and Flanagan jumped up and, it, and he, he just screamed in uh, Scott Morell's face. And, but, but you could see it clear as day on the BBC. It was, it was slightly in the background. I think Morell just laughed at him. Though, uh, yeah, yeah, but Morell <laughs> just laughed at him. He's <laughs> just like, what are you doing? Um, what are you doing? So, but is it, um, hey, I, bet, I bet he says so, some right old stuff to, to the opposition in game. So that has um, brought us to the semi-final stage. No real surprises, what do you reckon? Early thoughts, Hull and Hull Warrington, it depends which Hull turns up. Yeah, it, it does, doesn't it? They can either, either win the Cup Hull or get absolutely battered by Warrington in the semis. Uh, and, I don't, and I can't see there being an in-between at the moment. I can't see it being like 26-24 to Warrington or 20. I think uh, I think Hull will win like 18 points to 10 or something or, or it'll be 48 Six to, to <laughs> Warrington. I do fear for the other semi finalists a little bit oh. in, in regards to Halifax with the way St. Helens are playing. Yeah. And, and, and even if you're saying they like a joy to watch, you know, so that's why I said they're the sec- your second favourite it's, team. It's, a, it's an absolute mountain to climb <laughs> for Halifax. Uh, you'd be an absolute madman to bet against Saints <laughs> for that one, wouldn't, wouldn't you? Uh, I, think, I think they might rest a couple. Um, the likes of, I've noticed they have been resting Roby, uh, James Roby, quite a bit this season. They might give Aaron Smith a go and um, maybe give Danny Richardson a go and rest Johnny Lomax or something like that. Um, but it's it's going to be a, a big score, I feel, mm, unfortunately. I but, but, hey, Halifax have been an absolute uh, pleasure to have in the Charles Cup this season. They've provided us with, with plenty of great moments hopefully they can they can go out and put a, a fight against Saints now you're an expansionist go on your expansionist blog um, I've got two points one of them is Challenge Cup related uh, which involves Red Star Belgrade being invited back for next year which great. I, 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 I'm, I'm yeah. happy with as well I've been over there and I've been seeing uh, the way that they're developing well, it was it was great earlier on in the season wasn't it when they it, they played Millen didn't they in, yeah. in, in Millen at uh, Millen um, and, and the there was a massive crowd on to for for a Charles Cup tie, wasn't it? Wasn't there? There was a, a good couple of hundred on. Uh, the other expansionist oh, story that I'm going to chuck your way is go on. Visa problems at Toronto. Fred Parkinson, my dad, thanks a lot, has said is the shoe on the other foot now. As some Championship and Championship One teams have had problems with some of their players getting visa for Canada, Probably. will the same happen uh, to other teams oh. in the future if Brexit takes place? Oh, probably, probably will, wouldn't it? That'd be a a sticky situation right. to consider for. It's really uh, weird, though, isn't it, with Darcy Lusick? Because obviously he's been let him yeah, go. Yeah, so What was changed? I'm, I'm not sure. He's I, overlooked something. Is it? He actually went back to Sydney, didn't he? When when he got turned away, he went, he went to he went back to Sydney. He had to go back to Sydney. Yeah. 
Jeez, I bet, I bet these body clocks all over the place. Yeah. Well, so I, I, it, it was somewhere in Europe, wasn't it? Originally. So obviously the time zone would have been a bit different anyway. No doubt. He's trying. So he's as he. He wouldn't. He wouldn't have got on the flight, would he? I don't know, but it's, it's still an interesting. Debate, yeah, no. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to work. I'm just trying to work out. Would he have actually been able to get on a flight and then he'd landed in England and then they'd be like, sorry, and then he's like, go all the way back to, to Sydney. But yeah, I read that he went back to, to Sydney. Um, bizarre situation, they've got to get it sorted, haven't they, Toronto? Because they've had this issue a couple of times, haven't they? Where not, not one of their players has been denied entry, but teams have struggled in, in getting over there and they've had five or six players. We've seen physios take the field for whichever yeah, clubs yeah, that we've seen, yeah. um, you know, that, but, staff. But to be fair, that was more in the in the very first season, wasn't it, when it was in League One? And this is like a fresh uh, situation. But when they, uh, they obviously did the press release confirming that uh, Dice Lusik had been denied uh, entry into the UK, the, David Agar was adamant uh, and insisted that um, it's all part of the pro, like the journey that they're on. They're gonna come up with errors. It's the perils and pitfalls, but um, but really, they're, they're not a Canadian-based side, and we've no. got to get away from that. They're a Manchester-based side. Yeah. who occasionally go and play in Canada, aren't they? Yeah. They're all said and done. Yeah. And and go and play the rest of the games across the country. Yeah, they're they're, they're man, yeah, the the Manchester-based. Which is why but, but, I'm hoping Ottawa would yeah, do things but, a little bit but different. But Ottawa are going to be based in Ottawa, aren't they? That's what they're saying at the moment. Well, but then we yeah. heard they still moving to Toronto yeah. and, 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 and New, New Yorker as well uh, are apparently going to be based in New York. Aren't well, uh, let, let's see if they get off the ground first of all. Yeah, the, yeah, um, um, yeah. They're, we're a bit away, aren't we, from from New York? Yeah, it seems like Ottawa's the the one for twenty twenty one. Is it? Uh, Ottawa are going to probably be coming in early. Earlier, certainly than New York. Oh, twenty twenty Ottawa, twenty, 20 uh, what twenty twenty one? Sorry for for New York. Yeah. That, yeah. That's so cool. I just wanted to chuck that out there. We've got to return to. Um, but uh, it is it is something to consider, isn't it? De- like, definitely. For we've got a, much a return to uh, Bet Fred Championship action this weekend. We've got York against Toulouse on Saturday, which is a real hipster game going on there, isn't it? And then Sunday sees Bradford against Batley, Dewsbury against Rochdale, Lee against Halifax, big game. Sheffield Eagles against Featherstone Rovers, big game. Swinton against Toronto, obviously Swinton with yeah. their deal at the moment for getting Brilliant, in. brilliant deal. Five pound adults, under 16s go free. Uh, Widnicks against Barrow, which is a real four point to the for, for both sides. So some interesting, uh, interesting games coming up this weekend in the Bet Fred Championship. Moving on to Betfred League One, uh, and again we've got a busy weekend starting uh, tomorrow evening. Huntslet against Keithley. Mm. Then it's the big game on Saturday: West Wales Raiders against Workington Town. And then Sunday sees Doncaster versus Oldham, which um, is on the Owl League app. Half past five kickoff in that one. I know I'm, I'm on that one. Uh, North Wales Crusaders taking on Newcastle Thunder. Whitehaven against Coventry Burrs. Uh, Coventry, interestingly enough, they're on the road again, aren't they? Because yeah. they're, they're playing their home matches at Broad Street at the minute, but yeah. it's not available for the rest of the season. So they're going out to rugby. Mm-hmm. Wembley Road. Road. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Mm. Well, the 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 birthplace of rugby, isn't it? Um, Lucy's not shouted across, but we've got a bit more Wigan news for you. Chris Atkinson, new deal. Yeah, another new deal. They're certainly busy at the Warriors, aren't they today? But again, that's a strange one for me because again, I, they're not they're not signings that actually fill. You know, I, they're not they're not exciting that they, so they're not signings that excite, are they? Really? I think the Clark one is. I think the Bibby one, not so much. I, I don't think that these are. are they're not a Wigan standard player if you're looking at top three and, and playoffs. To look at, it's almost like, yeah, we're doing a rebuilding, we'll keep these guys for a couple of years and see where we get to. I, th- I um, think uh, it all depends. I think it just depends, Dave, on who departs Wigan. Mm. Because I think there's, there's a player like Talima Totai who's expected to leave at the end of the season. 
And if, if you're comparing the signing of Mitch Clark to, to Lee Matotai... He's about five years younger as well, isn't he? So. You, you'd probably prefer Clark, wouldn't you? Mm. Well, I think um, certainly on the form this season, definitely. On the form this season, would you have a Jake Bibby or Dan Sargison? Probably Bibby. Bibby? Yeah, yeah. So if it, and, and Bibby, you'd think, is on less money than Sargison, wouldn't you? So if Sargison and Totai leave and you're getting Clark and Bibby... Then that's a pot. And I, but I do, I do understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. They're not like a James Maloney from Penrith Panthers, where it's well, a even that one's star half back. That particularly wouldn't excite me. Got to would it not? No, no. Probably because I've not seen much NRL over the last five yeah. or six years. Well, so. yeah, it, it should excite you. Oh, okay. um, but um, yeah, I think I think what Wigan fans are hoping for at the minute, Dave, is the uh, the announcement um, of Jack, Jackson Hastings. I think that's what the the kind of they keep, I, I keep seeing tweets going to, to the Wigan account saying I know it's Jackson Hastings or, and there'll be riots if we don't to know <laughs> if we don't to know it's Jackson Hastings <laughs> but, but I, th- I, th- I think the positive side from Wigan but uh, again it just depends who goes out because um, you, you can't have too many squad players shall we say Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I get where you're coming from. Um, AB Sundex 1895 Cup, that's where we're going next. And um, yeah, we've seen the full range of the fixtures that have uh, taken place uh, now. So we had uh, Batley Bulldogs 38, Rochdale Hornets 18, Jewsbury Rams 44, Swinton Lions 26. Saw the highlights of that yesterday. Some excellent tries scored in that game, by the way. Lee Centurion 62, Workington Town 12. Again, some great tries scored there. Actually, for Greg McNally. Uh, Josh Woods having a, a great game as well. That was apparently his best game in a league shirt, was it? I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah, yeah, he was very, very influential. Uh, no Martin Ridyard, so he had to take control of that middle. But that, that, that's Josh Woods' role, isn't it? That That's the kind of player Josh Woods is. He's, he's kind of like that Martin Ridyard rather than that off the cuff kind of player. Mm. Is it, is that that's that kind of general role. The half back period between him and Ryan Briley when Briley was on loan, um, sort of really worked yeah. and, and, and gelled over that course of that five or six weeks that they were together. Uh, Oldham twelve, Doncaster twenty four, York City Knights thirty, Newcastle Thunder sixteen, and then uh, midweek we saw last night. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I was up in Barrow, Barrow fifty, Bradford Bull six. Halifax 8, Sheffield Eagles 52, that game interestingly enough being played over in Keithley. Um, Windys Vikings 22, Featherstone Rovers 16. Any particular surprises? I suppose given given the fact that both Halifax and uh, Bradford could maybe be questioned. For- on, on, on paper you'd say they're upsets because Halifax and Bradford are out but looking at the teams that actually were fielded. Uh, you'd say it wasn't an upset, um, but I bet Lee and Witness are laughing now because it, uh, their chance to get into Wembley um, on paper are finer than ever, aren't they? They've, uh, they've increased, haven't they? What do you make of the competition? I quite like I, it. I, I, I love it. But I, 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 this is what I wanted last season, but I'd be even more of a fan of it, Dave, if it was the game before the Challenge Cup final rather than the one afterwards. It's got a chance it could be after the Lord Mayor's show and nobody will be there. Yeah, yeah, um, but I, I'm, I'm a massive fan. I, I'm, the, the, the part-time players should not be forgotten in our sport um, and, and it's great that they'll have a chance to celebrate at Wembley. Win or lose, they, they could stay, them players... And the the coaching staff of respective clubs will be able to say, "I we've been to Wembley. I've coached on Wembley. I've played on that Wembley turf." And as a part time player, he'll probably play on that on that Saturday. Is it Saturday Challenge Cup final day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they'll probably some might be back on the building site on on a mon- on the Monday morning, and they played on, at Wembley on two days before. But they can go into work on that Monday and say, "I lifted the cup at Wembley." I think it's great. I'm a fan of it. I just feel that it's been um, a little bit rushed as maybe the organisation mm. of the tournament this time, and it possibly needs looking yeah. at how it sits in with the rest yeah. of the rest of the season. Because obviously, you've had this situation now where it's been highlighted with, between sort of Halifax yeah. and Bradford, 
and um, obviously their priorities lay elsewhere. I don't blame them for it. They've obviously got the resources where they can do that as well. It's their choice, um, but it's something that they, they definitely need to look at if it's going to continue yeah. beyond a couple of seasons. But I've yeah, I'm, I'm a massive fan of it. I, yeah. I like the fact that um, part-time players, like you say, get the opportunity to go out at Wembley. I would also argue as well at this stage, maybe it'd be a good time to to sort of start talking about representative rugby for mm. part-time players. You know, sort of championship mm. and league yeah, one. Yeah, um, yeah. You could have Lancashire and Yorkshire, for example, taking place in regarding that. You could have them going up against the French national side, which would probably be a much better contest than having uh, yeah. England or England Knights run 50 points yeah. past them. Yeah, no, 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 no. yeah, yeah, that would be pretty good, that, yeah. So I've been thinking about it. Actually. All of our news, I think. <laughs> All there for thinking down there. No, but, for, yeah. well, but, okay, um, maybe because, not exactly. Because in football, I, I noticed like you've got an England C, haven't they? That's what they call it. Mm. Um, where it, but uh, it, it's players who are in the conference and below, I think, isn't it? And, how and do I don't think League 2 players and League 1 players can make the, the England C side. But you could kind of have something similar like in rugby league, but have it championship league one and conference. Well, you'd split, you'd split it up, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd yeah. So that, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'd be a big fan of that. And we keep saying that these players don't get the kind of maybe profile they deserve, you know? Because I mean, there's some some cracking players who are, who are part time. Mm. Who'll probably never ever get a shot at playing full-time professional that's like yeah. Jamie Dallimore who was, was just a joy to be old watching him play the battle yeah. last night um, John Ong Smith rolled back the years got over for that cheeky try and set about four up you know it was just it was just great to see lads yeah. like that um, and I just think that this needs to be something uh, to encourage these lads and give them something to play for them all isn't seen as being yeah. lost yeah you know definitely Okay, that's me uh, being my bonnet. What about your thoughts as well? Um, I want to come to Tim Sheens because he does deserve a, a conversation point all of his own. Um, can I say, I'm not really surprised because they've been so up and down, Hull Kingston Rovers, and there's been talk of him going anyway at the end of the season. I know, Dave, but I'm trying to be as respectful as I can possibly be, but where do you expect Hull Kingston to be? With that squad they've got. Well, you would expect them to probably be about where. Although, if I remember rightly, you were tipping them to be about seventh, I think, weren't you? Was it seventh? No, I, I, I said they did, did finish bottom four. Did you? At the, at the start of the season, I said. I might put words in your mouth. Yeah, I think you are, do. I, <laughs> I, I think I might have said that. I think I might have said Sulfur might have crept into the into the top eight this season. Yeah. Um, but Hulk, yeah, I expected Hulk yeah, to finish in the bottom four. Yeah. Um, just because of the the squad they've got, is it, you can probably sit, you can count eight Super League teams who have got a better squad than OKR. Um, and Tim Sheen is a fantastic coach. I'm a big fan of him as well. He's he's, a, he's great to speak to in press conferences. He's always open and honest. Yeah, he'll tell you what, exactly what he thinks. He doesn't sugarcoat anything. Um, and I think he's been hard done to as well, to be fair, because. It seemed like people knew he was getting sacked before he knew he was getting sacked. Mm. Um, and I don't quite... How, how does that happen? Well, there was that quote where, if I'm not here on Thursday, boys, I've been sacked. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a right weird thing, isn't it? Yeah. For but, but, well, the, the report came out that on Monday or Sunday? Yeah. Monday, I think. Yeah, yeah. The report came out on Monday that he was going to be sacked. And it only happened on we late Wednesday night about half past nine Wednesday night Th three days difference near enough Dave uh, that's a very very strange one isn't mm. it very strange because I, I, don't, I just don't I just don't think it's it, it's I, fair on, on Tim Sheen because Tim Sheen how has done great how, how do you think his Hulk impact at Hull Kingston Rovers because I mean like he was um he was almost like director rugby when he at Salford before moving over to Hull KR and, and yeah. sort of dipping his toes in the, uh, yeah. in the coaching realm again. I, I think he's been good for Hull KR. Obviously, they already got relegated. Yeah, they already got. They already got relegated. Got promoted. 
to the first attempt. They spent a bit of money, didn't they, to get promoted? But he had a massive uh, score. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. It, but he, he did a great job with him. Got him promoted first time of asking in Super League. It's it's expected. They've just been what I expect of OKR. Uh, they, they've they've had some good games where they blew teams away. They've had some great results against some of the uh, big boys, if you like, in Super League. But at the end of the day, with the, with the squads they've had, with many respects... Do you think they're getting the, their expectation levels wrong there in trying to replace him? Or, or do you think I, that I, now is probably the right time to replace him? I mean, he's been there, what? This would be his third season, wouldn't it? I think... I think... I think they expected to be in, in the top eight this season, didn't they? And obviously they're not. But I think they have got their, the expectation level wrong because... I just don't think... Whose squad do they think that they've got a better squad than? London? They've not got a better squad than Leeds on paper. If you go into the season, you, you, you're not saying they've got a better squad than Leeds. But they're outperforming them, aren't they? Really? Have you got a better squad than Huddersfield? Mm. Ish, mate. Mm. Have, have they? <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I think... I, I Say it's Warrington, Wigan... Cass, uh, Wakefield, uh, Catalans. You're like you're testing yourself here to remember most of the Super League. I am. Who <laughs> FC? Do you, do the, the, there are seven clubs who have got a better. Uh, Leeds have got a better squad than them. Eight clubs. Do you want the table? Just in case you missed anybody. Eight. We can't, um, can't afford to miss anybody. We already know that you've got a great relationship with Huddersfield Giants supporters. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to be kind to Huddersfield, actually. Um, <laughs> Saints got a bit of Saints, Warrington, Catalans, Hull, Castleford, Wakefield, Leeds, Rhinos have all got a better squad than him. The only squad, in my opinion, that Hull have got a better squad than uh, is is London and possibly Salford mm. and possibly Huddersfield. So they're on par with three other teams, and that's bottom four. So I. Uh, I just think, what can they expect? Uh, I just think they, they expect too much because the team is not as good as their the competitors. James Ford is the first name that's been linked yeah. with it. But do you think they'll go maybe with uh, a Webster till the end of the season? Yeah. He, he's there, isn't he? Yeah, it? and uh, I think James Ford probably would will, will like to see the, the season out with York, wouldn't he? And leave him in a, in a probably steady position in the Championship. Um, but I think if, if they did go for Ford, we do understand that they have made an approach to James Ford, but from f- for next season. Ah, right, okay. Um, which I also find a little bit staggering regarding the Tim Machines saga because why not just say to Tim Machines, uh, please go till the, the end of the season and uh, we'll end on, on, on good terms and steer us t- uh, to Super League safety rather than another mix-up and then another coach, I know James Webster were already there, but another coach coming into the head coaching role, that could... Maybe mixing things yeah, up. Yeah, that, that, so, I mean, that could go one way or the other. Because to be honest, extreme it, circumstances, that even thing. if you're an assistant coach, you're going to have your own ideas, aren't you, of how you want a team to run. So the, yeah. the, there's going to be something and some sort of discussion there, isn't there, that you'd have with your yeah. players about changing, even if you're just tweaking things yeah. here and there. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I thought the timing of it's really strange. Yeah, I just, I just thought they should have stuck with Tim Sheen. Even if they, they wanted to sack, uh, sack him, I think they should have stuck with Tim Sheen until the end of the season, steered him to safety. Was he out of contract at the end of the yeah. season? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think he was going to. So uh, it's not we're not faced with like a Dave Fern situation where leads up. Where's that balloon come from? Happy birthday, Dave. <laughs> Happy birthday to Dave. Cheers. <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> Where's that come from? Um, but but yeah, I've, I've, it's, is it's that you a, saying that I'm speaking full of um, full of hot air? <laughs> so <laughs> shut up and move on. Is that what you're saying? No, but but yeah, uh, I thought Tim Sheen should have said to the end of the season uh, because it, he's, he's done well for OKR in the in the couple of years he's been there. Uh, I think he should have just been treated with a little bit more respect, to be honest, and um, gone out on on a pretty good note, good terms with the club. And they could have had a bit of a send off to him uh, towards the end of the season. That's not happened. James Webster's in 
in at the moment. We don't know if it's till the end of the season or not, or if because obviously it was reported last week that Justin Morgan's back in in the country. Well, he's sniffing around, chaps. Uh, and he was spotted in Hull last week. Has he not got property over there still? Oh, has he? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? But I mean, he was over here for a long while. Oh, yeah. He? And obviously, he's got affiliation with, with OKR. Um, so, could it be a return for him till the end of the season or something like that? Um, but, yeah, James Ford's the, the odds on favourite to become OKR head coach from 2020 onwards. And would that be a good move? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of James Ford. I think Personally, everyone, I like I Ford. think everyone is, aren't they, at the minute? I think everyone's tipping uh, James Ford is the brightest young coach in, in the game. He's a nice guy, and you get straight answers from him as well. Yeah. And that's what I, I quite like. And he's, he's got fresh ideas, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but there's a couple of coaches, Richard Marshall as well, uh, who obviously left uh, Halifax not too long as well. I mean, we've got the lead job still. Well, we have to be yeah. <laughs> We've got the, the Wigan job yeah. that still hasn't been confirmed, so yeah. it's no wonder that they're sniffing around. Is it real? I think I think Ford will be the man for Hulk Right. And I, right. and I think obviously they've got they've got Hulk have got links, haven't they? With York, oh, Junior hey. Bye Bye, and Will Oaks have spent time. They have. They've the been the dual reg partners, haven't they? They've been the dual reg. Yeah, of course. course. They've, they've got this, as you mentioned, uh, the recent loan. Yeah. One signings there as well. So, so the, you've got a good relationship, and I think, um, I think, I think Ford will promote within as well. I think he'll get the best out of the, the academy as well with the uh, hockey. Uh, and of course, that's coming back on board next year. Mm-hmm. They've already announced that uh, Bastian's going in there, isn't he, John Bastian? Mm-hmm. Um, where you know he's got a fantastic record of producing young talent and uh, spotting it and developing it. He's so, produced many, mm-hmm. many a good player for for Bradford, hasn't he, over the years? Although. If all Kingston Rovers get relegated, will they be in a similar position to Widnes where they might have to let it all go? I don't think they'll get relegated, Dev. Mm. Come on, London. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a big story. Let's have a big story. Uh, right. If Leeds finish bottom, will they get relegated, Dev? Yeah. Let's relegate them. They'd be cracking. They'd be cracking in champion. Imagine, imagine if Unsplit get promoted from League One this season. Against Leeds next season. And Bradford. Ooh. Leeds Bradford, Leeds Unslut. I mean, I've already suggested. Unslut Bradford. I already suggested. I already suggested because Andrew Chalmers was going all on about mergers again last week that you know, uh, Bradford should already merge with Leeds because there's an airport named after him. But that's just me mischief making. I'm going to move on before I say something that I might regret and later rely on in court. <laughs> um, <laughs> Super League. Super League. Super Super League. Yeah. Uh, Looked on Friday, no Thursday night. No Thursday, one on Saturday. The is, this why, is this why I have the pleasure of your company today? The old, the old you're used to <laughs> working on a Thursday night, aren't you? Yeah. I know you, you always say you can't be in two places at once. I can, well, I can't, you, can, yeah. you could get a telly set up. <laughs> I can't do that. Oh, I, I, like, I like attending the games, Dave. But yeah, the three, three on the Friday, yeah. two on the Sunday, one on the Saturday, isn't it? We've got uh, Warrington on the, Warrington Catalans on Sky this week. That's right. Yeah, we've got Castleford against Huddersfield, uh, Hull against Salford, Wakefield against Leeds, all on Friday night. Warrington Catalans, as you mentioned there, on the Saturday, quarter past three kick off, and then Sunday, Hull Kingston Rovers against Wigan Warriors, London Broncos against St Helens. Yeah. Hmm. Should we go through the? Should we do predictions or not? Oh, you can do predictions. I don't like doing them. Me. Uh, you, you, you heard you heard me debating with, uh, with with Leon Price about betting last night. I'm, I'm already one pound fifty down now. Wake, Wakefield to beat Leeds, Warrington to beat Catalan, Wigan to beat OKR, Saints to beat who were they playing? London. London. Who can I mention? Cass and Huddersfield. Cast to be to field. That'd be a close game, that though. That'd be a good game to watch. That. Did you mention Hull and Salford? No. Uh, Hull to beat Salford. Did that you probably means Salford will put fifty packs full. Did you mention Wakefield? Wakefield Leeds. Yeah, Wakefield to beat Leeds. All oh, right. Okay. So woes to continue for the yeah, Rhinos yeah. fans. They've, they've not won away in six games, Dave. Have they not? Dreadful run. Yeah. Dreadful run. They'd be sacking the coach. Well, they've already done that, haven't they? <laughs> uh, and, uh, which is the other game on the Sunday day? Um, Hulkings and Rovers against Wigan. Oh, yeah, yeah, Wigan. 
that will be, be interesting to see how Ulki are bounced back from, from uh, the, the Sheer departure. Mm. It will, won't it? Webster's army. Webster's cod army. It was it used to be, it once was Web, Webster's army, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you were scrapped there for a number of years, wasn't uh, it? Uh, right, I think that's just about us done and dusted. Have I missed anything? I don't think so. When we went back to deals, all the Kershaw signed an extension at Wakey, didn't he? Oh, there we go. Yeah, we, knew, we knew we missed one. Um, good young player. Yeah, did very well uh, on two loan styles at Oldham. Uh, and he had his Super League debut, didn't he, earlier on this year. Uh, played against St. Helens last week. <laughs> he, he, he did okay, uh, but you can only do okay at the minute. Can't you against a, a team like Saints when they're in full flow? So, um, yeah, he's a, he's a good player. One, I, one for the future. I can't it? believe we're ending this show with Drew. A die in the wool Wiganer praising St. Helens. Join us again. Credit work, credit stew, Dev. Join us again next week. I can't be with you, but I'm sure that Drew, James and James will uh, continue the battle forward and we'll sign out on this edition of Love Rugby Weekly. Thank you very much for joining us.